I don't know if the internet can handle all Eric's energy. And hey, hey there he is. Mr. Cooper! <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> I'm so happy to see you, man. <laughs> hey, happy Saturday. Hey, man, I, uh, I love your, your color, the, the purple. It's <laughs> very royal and very- It's all, it's all for you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. Dude, how have you been, man? Above ground. That's all I'm looking for. <laughs> oh, man. How about I, you? I Well, you know, I'm stuck in my house, but I'm, st I'm still finding ways to stay busy, and I'm finding things to practice. Uh, I've been really getting into Bach a lot recently, and uh, that's something I know you've done a lot of Bach transcriptions in the past. I know you've done uh, your recordings of the Bach, the solo Bach, but um, yeah, it's really inspired me to kind of dig through the, um, you know, the stuff that I can play. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't you worry. We're just getting started. Okay. So first of all, I have a couple of disclaimers to put out. Okay. So obviously this is a live conversation and, um, you know, anything that I say during the course of this is just my opinion. Yeah. You know, it's just my experience. You know, I don't give advice on, you know, you know, it's like all I can do is, you know, share what I've done, you know? And, um, second thing, Second disclaimer is my, my daughter always tells me, pas de gros mot, papa. And so my language tends to be a little bit colorful. <laughs> <laughs> so I will, I will offer an excuse out now and an apology, an open apology to anybody who's listening and say, sorry if there's anything that, uh, any colorful words that you haven't heard before. And the third thing is, and the most important is I just fucking adore you. I love you. <laughs> I can't believe it, man. I can't believe we're having this conversation. You got a Diet Coke? <laughs> Look at that. Uh, it's breakfast time. <laughs> well, I didn't get my Diet Coke yet. I should go grab one, man, just so we both have a Diet Coke. We both. Ah, uh, look, see? You can drink that. You're healthier. You're younger. Yeah. I'm, you know, I only got a few minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so... Dude, um, how have you been doing through this whole, like, you know, the corona time? I mean, you, I don't think you've noticed, I mean, what changes have you noticed? You know, my life has gotten better. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, totally. You know, it's like, you know, it's simplified. And, you know, as you and I both know, I mean, it's, you know, I, you know, I don't wait, I don't think myself into good action. I act myself into good thinking, mm. right? Yes. And that's like the most important thing. And, you know, it's like, if I get up in the morning, you know, look, it's not like it's the 1980s, right? Where your TV show is on at a specific time and you're like, ooh, ooh, I gotta be there at 10 o'clock. I mean, Netflix fucking on all the time, 24 <laughs> hours a day. So, you know, my, my suggestion is, is that, you know, it's like, you know, strap on the big girl pants, right? Get up, get up at six, yeah. practice, you know, I mean, have a routine yeah. and you stick to it. And it doesn't matter whether I want to or not. Yeah. That's not a part of the equation. And like, you're, you're fabulous about this. You're, you, I mean, you're so self-disciplined. You are really, I mean, the reason that you have what you have is because you do what you do. Well, I learned and, from you, you know, it's like, you know, <laughs> the power example. No, you know, and the fact is, is that it's like, you know, we all, you know, anything that anything I've ever said, anything I've ever done has come to me, you know, through somebody else. It's like Mr. Clevenger. I can remember when I was a kid. Hey, he's I, watching, by the way. Big high. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. There are, Clevenger's watching. My, my three favorite horn players come through Chicago. Oh, ah, so Je t'adore, mon petit. You know, Mr. Clevenger, Mr. Cooper, and Mr. Lewis, you know, and, you know, and it's that, and, you know, that's, I mean, there are tons of horn players that I really, really like. And you three, oh, I fucking love you. Ah, that's the best, you wow. know, and it's like, you know, and the fact is, is I can remember when I was a kid and when I was in school and, you know, Mr. Clemens said to me, he was like, you know, he gave me this thing about, the, you know, doing the sing routine in the morning. He said, you know, it's like, I won't do the, the, I, I, I won't do the accent because I do it so poorly. But he said, you know, look, this is what I did. This is what I started doing when I was a kid. You can do it or you can not do it. That's up to you, you know? And so I was like, wow, well, it works for him. So perhaps I should, perhaps I should like start doing the heavy routine and I still do it. 
Yes. It's like how I get up. And it's like my time with him. And I tell Steve wow. that my time with him, I mean, it's the marriage that I've had in my life that's lasted the longest. <laughs> <laughs> I start every morning and I end every day with him, you know, whether he likes it or not. Yeah. Wow. That's and, fantastic. You know, and, and there's that, you know, that's the consistency factor. It's not, you know, as you and I know, you know, the world is judging me by my, you know, I'm judging myself by my intentions and the world is judging me by my actions. Nobody gives yeah. a shit what I say. It's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I but it's also that you. You know, it's it's also that you know that piece that's like hey if I want what you have then I have to be willing to do what you did you know and you said you know and it's like that stick with the winners aspect you saw Mr. Clevenger and you said hey like that worked for him and I want what he has so I'm gonna do what he does so I mean it's exactly. you know a lot of, a lot of kids uh, you know come to me and they say like hey like I want, how, how do I play this? They give me the answer, tell me how it feels. Like, you know, and they want me to implant my knowledge to their head. And I'm just like, it's the self journey. It's like that, that whole self discovery, those moments of curiosity and discovery. Time. Sorry, you, you, you have a lag there, say again. Time takes time. You know, everyone wants, every, you know, it's always about, you know, immediate gratification. And the fact is, is that what we do, thankfully so, you know, it takes time and it is a journey. And like, like that, I mean, it's like, you know, we are where we are because, you know, because we've done what we've done. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, the fact is, is that if, you know, look, ah, only you and I, David, right? So, <laughs> you know, the fact is, is that if you find yourself and everyone, everyone feels a little bit down, it's, you know, in Boston, you know, look, it's, it's gray and it's raining and whatever, you know, spring, springtime will come. Yeah. I mean, you know, but the fact is, is if I find myself, you know, kind of feeling less enthusiastic about getting up in the morning and practicing at five or, you know, walking into school in the rain or, or, you know, talking to my kids, doing, you know, French homework with my daughter, you yeah. know, any of that kind of stuff, you know, it's not about, you know, the fact is, is if I go through the action, mm. then on the back end of it, I'm always like, ah, I feel better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, what we always tell guys is like, you know, look, try it for 30 days. Try it for 30 days. And if it doesn't work for you, you're, we can refund your misery. No problem. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do they, do they talk about, though, the, the habit? Like, building a habit takes, you know, time. Like, to do something consistently, that's when you, like, I, for me, I feel like if I'm going to get up every morning and just do that, it, I need to, like, have that action and that repetition of doing it. Well, I did it the day before, I'm going to do it today. It's that repetition of, like, the habit, building habit. Right. I mean, and, you know, and, and good habits are, are, I mean, it's, you're building habits one way or the other. Yes. Good habits are bad ones. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sleeping in until noon. I'm watching Netflix until four. I'm, you know, and I do it one day, then I do it the next day. And now I feel, I don't feel so good. Yeah. I don't feel so well. Right. And, you yes. know, at this point, it's, if I, if I groom that path of, okay, just for today, I'm going to do the next right thing. It doesn't matter whether I want to or not. Yeah. The wanting to is like, that's removed from the equation for for, for guys like you and me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, it's a necessity, right? Yeah. It's, just, it's just what we do. Totally. And um, you know what I love about you? You said something uh, in a lesson a couple years ago that really stuck with me. Hey, like, I have this life that's second to none. And to show my gratitude for this life that I've been given, I do these things, you know, and this is just what, and um, it stuck with me. It's like, hey, like, there are days where I don't feel like getting up, but I'm so grateful that I have, you know, I get the ability to play horn. Um, I have that as my, you know, my job. I'm like alive today. I'm like happy. I'm of service. I have you in my life. I have these great relationships. You know, these are the things I'm really grateful for, but I show that gratitude by getting up and just practicing. And, you know, the most important thing you did, which I find so impressive about you, is that you are always of service, you know? And that, I mean, that's how, that's how we stay grateful. Yeah. Like, if you feel like, you know, you know, to somebody who's, you know, who's feeling depressed or somebody who's feeling, oh, I can't get motivated, stick out your hand. 
help somebody else. Get your head out of your ass and like, and, and realize it's a big world out there and there are lots of people. You know, it's yeah. funny. It's like, you know, it's so funny. I know guys who are dying, you know, and they complain and they whine so much less than people who aren't. Yeah. You wow. know, and so, you know, the thing is, is that this is a huge thing that you do. You're of service. You're of service to the profession. You're of service elsewhere in your life, you know, and I mean, like even these little chats, you know, people, you're, I mean, you're so impressive because it's, look, if I had your job, oh, I would just wait. I would wait for people to come and like, listen to me, but you don't. Yeah. You're so, I mean, that humility that you've got is so impressive because you're like, you're really, you're genuinely interested in other people. Yeah, I really, I mean, well, I really care, you know. It's, yeah, it's, it's not about you. Yeah. It's really about others, which I don't get. <laughs> <laughs> all for one and i'm the one we used to say <laughs> i used to play this brass quintet <laughs> we used to say that all the time <laughs> all for one and i'm the all one. for one and i'm the one <laughs> that's my new motto <laughs> okay. so could you could you tell me a little bit about what it was like to be an empire brass i mean you guys just seem like like the rock stars of oh. like, the classical world but also you know, like you put out some of the best, you know, my favorite recordings, like, you know, your transcription. You know, it's, you know, without a doubt, it's, um, it was one of those periods in my life that, uh, it was one of my, one of the favorite periods in my life. And I've had a lot, you know, every day is pretty much my favorite day, right? But, you know, I think about like Jeff Kernow. I mean, you know, yeah. Rolf, Rolf was the, Rolf, the Rolf Medvig was the, was the, um, Rolf and Sam Palafian. He was a trumpet player and the tuba player, and they taught me so much. I mean, I can remember when I was my first gig with the quintet. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some little town in Pennsylvania, and and it was some uh, quintet and organ thing. And I'd never met them, I'd never played with them, and so they just said, "Just show up," because they were in the middle of a tour, and they said, "So just show up." So I showed up, and I was like, I was starting to get a little nervous, right? I was like, I had this book of handwritten parts, and I was like, well. Uh, do you guys want to read through some of these tunes before? And Rolf said, no, no, let's just play some basketball. Let's shoot some baskets, right? So I was like, uh, okay. So, you know, we, we, we played basketball and then we go out on stage and we start this one tune. <laughs> we said, and Rolf counts out. He's like, ah, 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 literally that loudly, right? So that, you know, it's this, this Bach cantata with quintet and organ. So they start off and uh, 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 uh. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going along one, two, three, four, one. And all of a sudden, you know, at the end of my 18 bars of rest at the beginning, I come in and it's just horrifically wrong. <laughs> and I realized it was in two and it was, I was reading a handwritten part that was, I was counting it four. So I was gone for the entire piece. I was completely lost. And I would pick up my horn and I would kind of play like, you know, put, you know, kind of fake it for a second and then put it back down and fake it for a second. So we get done with the tune. I didn't play a note, right? So we get done with the tune, we bow. And I'm standing next to Jeff Kernow, who's... <laughs> we get done with the tune. And, we, you know, we're all bowing. And as my head's down, after having not played a single note, I hear this... Yeah, nice job, fucko. <laughs> <laughs> After the gig is over, I was like, wow, this is going to be a short-lived uh, tenure with Empire Brass. So after the gig was over, Rolf says to me, he said, yeah, so you want the job or what? I was like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, you just kept going. You just kept going. And that was, you know, and this is one of the things that I try to tell kids. It's like, you know, that, that little pithy saying, you know, there is no dress rehearsal in life. Mm. You know, that's it. You got one day. You got, two. how are you going to use it? Right? Oh. You, I mean, you know, for me, today's a gift. You know, it's, it's the present. And that's all I got. You know? Sorry. I, um, you know, it's one of the great things that, um, you know, we that that saying that we get, you know, if I've got one foot in the present and one foot in the past, I'm peeing all over today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it, well, you know, because like we can only do this moment, we can only live right now. That's like, 
you know, like I can learn from the past. I can't change it. And in the future, that's like, I never know what's going to come. And I can't control what, you know, and those outcomes. That comes. It's always today. Yeah. And, you know, this was a thing I can remember, like, you know, and, you know, I love the fact that you and Mr. Clef are so tight. And when I see you guys spending time together and I missed your thing because I, you know, I was teaching whatever, I missed the conversation that you had with him. But to see the two of you together makes me so happy. And I mean, I can't think of anybody ever, you know, that I would, that I think is worthy of sitting in his chair. You know, Mr. Gingrich then, you know, was like, you know, it's a giant, such a yeah. great player. But I mean, you know, he was, you know, he's been playing, you know, decades. He's been, you know, and of service playing principal horn of the Chicago Symphony for years. But yeah. see you to DC. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no coincidence. And, you know, and the, the thing that I learned so much from him was like, you know, the risk, you know? Yes, I mean, yes. I mean, it's the unabated, the unabashed enthusiasm for right now. Yeah. You know, commit, commit yeah. to the moment, right? You know, I was telling my kids, you know, I was, uh, of course I was saying it, but nobody was listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, passion and passive. You know, they both start with B-A-S-S-E. They both start with P-A-S-S-I, right? Do you have passion or are you passive, right? I mean, are you grabbing I, uh, yeah. grabbing on or are you just kind of just sitting there? Yeah. You know, I don't have that long to live. So I'm going to grab on. <laughs> well, tell, tell me about your, your concept of playing, though, because whenever you play something, it does grab me. You know, whenever you, I mean, and that's like one of the things that like I always, you, you feel like you have a plan, but you're also saying something. And that's so rare with so many players. You know, I, I, you know, this goes back to like anything. I mean, how badly do you want it? I mean, what does it mean to me? What is it? I mean, sometimes we have to fake. I can remember, I can remember Mr. Clemson tell a great story about there was a time when I was, I was obviously was in school and he was telling us, it was like, you know, I went to go play, I went to go play Brooker four. And he said, he sat down and his, his hand was kind of, all of a sudden he started off and it was like, uh, and he's like, why am I shaking? He's like, why am I nervous? He said, I'm nervous. You know, he said, you know, it's not, but I, like I'm shaking and I can't, and I can't figure out why. And then as he's playing, he's like, oh, he put up a chin up bar into the door jam at his house for his kid. And he was like, and he was like, mm -hmm. so when he got gig, he was like, oh, my arms, all of a sudden, and you know, this is what happens. You know, life is what happens, you know, life is what happens between concerts. Yes. So you, I mean, you've got a concert and then life happens and then you're on stage again. Sometimes you're not, I'm not necessarily always, you know, feeling my most rapturous. I, I walk on stage. <laughs> I can remember having ripped my Jack, my oldest son. Oh, I was literally screaming at him at the, on the phone about something that it was when he was much, 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 much younger. And I walked out on stage and I uh, had to, I was like clear or something. And I was so hot and bothered. I thought I could, I mean, it was homicide would have been easier than the air, right? And yet, and that, there you are, right? Yeah. So, but having said that, I mean, you know, the, the, the concept of, you know, why, why do we do it? You know, what, what is it that, what, what relationship do I have to it? I mean, what do I love about it? You know, it was like, you know, it's like my kids. There are times when kids are just a responsibility. <laughs> just a responsibility. I just <laughs> literally have to feed them. That's it. But. You know, if I don't do it, then I don't get the relationship that follows. Wow. Yeah. It's like practicing. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody cares whether I want to practice, but if I don't practice regularly, routinely, consistently, then I walk on stage and I, you know, I haven't earned the right to play well. Mm. Because, you know, I'm not committed. Wow. Well, yeah. And so, you know, the thing is, is that when I, when I listen to you play, when I listen to the players that I love, Heinrich Sharon, when I listen to anybody, I mean, Glenn Gould, Anybody who's, I mean, who loves it. I mean, you know, look, if you're working the fucking front counter at 7-Eleven, you're probably not like, wow, woo! 
<laughs> you would be. <laughs> you love 7-Eleven, yeah. man. Yeah, but they changed those big gulp sizes. Yeah, the double gulp. <laughs> Smaller. Exactly. <laughs> no, Never been an underdose. <laughs> what? No, it's just a gulp. It's not even a big gulp. <laughs> I, I just don't get that. Yeah. <laughs> Who made that decision? I don't know. <laughs> but you know, it's um, you know, as is, you know, as is always the case. You know, going back to like even talking about the quintet. You know, any time. You know, everything that I've ever done is, I've never had an original thought in my life, right? You know, and everything I learned about doing transcriptions, I learned from Rolf and Sam, right? They would, I got in the quintet and they started doing, we did arrangements of everything. We did transcriptions of all this orchestral stuff, all this Baroque stuff, and, and I didn't understand it. I mean, I'm like, you know, transposition skills were abysmal, abysmal. And, you know, I got into the group and it was like I had to learn. Right. And then I kind of learned how to do arrangements. I learned how to do transcriptions. I learned, you know, I learned that if I set my musical sights high, I mean, if all I want to do is play the Beethoven horn sonata, then all I think, if, if I think that that's like the end all be all of Beethoven sonatas, that little Beethoven horn sonata, then I'm just woefully disappointed. Mm. Right. If I listen to the Kreutzer, if I listen to Spring Sonata, if I listen to, you know, if I listen to late Beethoven quartets, now I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I realize that my part, my little part to add is hmm, infinitesimal to say the least. But, you know, the fact is, is that I listen to it. And because we do what we do, we have this ticket into this world. I mean, like, you understand. You you sit down and you play Bach. I love those little postings that you do of you playing Bach. Brandon Burke Concerto. I mean, you know, um, parts of uh, the violin sonatas and partitas. I mean, it's beautiful. You know, remain teachable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I got my ass handed to me yesterday playing those. Those are just so hard. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, I'm trying to read in like Seahorn and then there's like, you know, an E natural. And I'm like, what is E natural? Oh, that's RC. <laughs> e natural is the same, or E sharp, excuse me. E natural is the same as, a, you know, F in harmonic. <laughs> F or your F. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, this is the thing. It's like all of a sudden, you know, to anybody who's, who's either bored or feeling not particularly motivated, I mean, that's on you. I mean, don't expect me to fucking entertain you. I mean, if you don't get it, then you gotta, I mean, ask questions. Mm -hmm. To what should I be listening? I mean, if you're playing, if you're playing Auf dem Strom, it's a great song, right? But go listen to the cello quintet. Yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? You know, the, the Mozart horn quintet was for five horns. I was like, oh. Yeah, I think we're gonna give Mozart a little bit more credit than that. He was smart enough not to write a piece for five horns. <laughs> but you know, the cello quintet for you know two cellos and then string quartet. I mean, you know, um, cello uh, know, string quartet and extra cello. I mean, it's one of the most beautiful pieces ever, right? But yeah. if I if I think if all I do is practice what I've got, yeah, and a I stop growing technically, and more importantly, I stop growing musically, and I stop getting and then I'm like, what do I practice? Mm. What am I? What am I supposed to be doing? I love practicing. Yeah, and you do too. Absolutely. I mean, it's like the thing I wake up every day looking forward to, and I know you do as well. I do. Yeah. You know, and and you know, and I I kind of look, you know, I look forward to just waking up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I don't know about the other stuff, but I mean, the practicing is also a nice benefit. But yeah. It's uh, so. What do you look for when you transcribe things into um, a horn? Like, so what? What do you? What pieces? What makes a great horn transcription? Because um, you've done a number of those. Ooh. Um, you know, this is this is the great thing, and it's. I always love listening to people. I like listening to what pe what music people choose, and you know, the great thing is being a horn player. Uh, you know, we have. I mean, the sky's the limit both technically, oh, oh my God. I can remember when I, this is how I was, I was in my early twenties or something. And 
I went to the um, Munich. It was just after I'd left the orchestra. And I went to this. I'd made the I'd made the leap to leave the orchestra. And I went to the Munich uh, competition. I don't know if it's still called that. ARD. It? ARD. ARD. Yeah. Right. So I went there. And this was going to be my big coming out. I was going to, you know, I was going to make my name as a horn soloist. Because now, now I was leaving the orchestra to become a soloist. Needless to say, I fucking tanked it. Right. I was out after like the first round. And I. <laughs> So, I mean, been, been there. Yeah. <laughs> and I was so embarrassed, humiliated, ashamed, scared. I had all those feelings. I was like, oh, what have I done? What am I going to do? And then, and, you know, this, you know, I didn't, I had a ticket that I bought a, a, an airline ticket that, you know, was going to leave in like another 10 days, you know, so I was there for the rest of the competition. But because I've got such a frightfully large, I mean, and I mean, I'm so I've got a huge ego, but I'm so insecure. Right. So I was like, I didn't want to listen to anybody else. I just was like, I just want to stop. I just want to. But I was like, OK, strap on the big girl pants and go listen to the other people play. So Jamie Somerville happened to be there at the time and he ended up winning, which was, wow. I mean, you know, it was the beginning of my love affair with listening to him. Right. Sure. But I remember this one moment where this guy. I was over in this guy's house and he was playing, uh, uh, he was playing something that was just fiendishly technical. And I was dumbfounded. I had never, this was before I started playing with the quintet. And I didn't really understand what, what technique was. I just thought, you know, technique was like playing the end of the first movement of Mahler 3. And I was like, whoa, right? And I heard this guy playing this piece and uh, Bush Bay, Bush Bay. I was, I, I was just, I can remember it like it was yesterday. And I was in awe. And, and also I was, you know, I was so, um, that moment of humility, you know, and I, and I listened to this guy and I was like, okay, now I, the, you know, there's a fork in the road and I can pretend that I've never heard this guy and just lead my life the way it is. Or I can say, okay, let's, Let's dig deep now. I mean, you know, can you do what he's, can you, can you learn to play kind of what he's playing? And so, I mean, you know, those, those tiny little moments that we all have them, right? It was like the moments when, <laughs> when, <laughs> when Jennifer, you know, Jennifer, Jennifer Frouchy. Yes. Right? She, uh, she's the mother of my daughter, Sienna, and a uh, brilliant violinist. I mean, one of my favorite musicians ever, right? <laughs> we can start. Is this okay if I just tell stories, or is this? Yes, fun? I love it. I love it, man. This is great. I love this, and this <laughs> is a me. great, we'll give this a great story. story. <laughs> so, so Jennifer, it was like we had just, we just kind of started dating, right? And she was up in Boston, and she came to this concert that I, I was playing a horn and organ recital here in Boston. So she came to the recital and I done, I, you know, I did this, you know, this transcription of some Bach Sonata and, and some other stuff. And, you know, I pulled out all the stops and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, smooth. You know, she's going to be so impressed. And then, you know, back to her after the gig, <laughs> I said, you know, in my most self-effacing and, you know, oh, so, you know, what did you think? She was like, really? And I was like, oh. Yeah, speech, just dumbfounded, right? And she's, and I said, yeah. She said, really? And I was like, hmm, hmm. this doesn't seem to be going very well. And I said, uh, uh-huh. She said, to what are you listening? And I, <laughs> uh, 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 and I, I thought it was like a trick question. I was like, um, uh, I don't know. Said, Could you hear the organ? She goes, but what is going on with your intonation? It was like, you were awful. And I was like, uh. uh. Oh, man. I was like, I, I think I hear my mom calling. I've got to go now. But, you know, it's like the next day. You yeah. know, what do you do? Yeah. So I started working with a drone. And I started working, you know, and I started hearing what it feels like to play in tune. Yeah. Like the rest of the human race. Oh, yeah. You know, babe. I, I remember that moment when I was kind of like, uh, after my third audition with the Chicago Symphony, and I didn't make it out of the, or my second audition, I didn't make it out of the prelims. 
And I was just like, like so at first I was like, what? I just got great reviews and like, you know, uh, for my solo concert and I didn't make it out of my, you know, like the prelims. So what I was looking at was like, okay, I must not be good enough. What isn't good enough? Well, I'm not in tune and I'm not in time. So how can I fix those? And that was finally the moment where I'd had enough of it. I was like, you know, the pain of remaining the same was greater than the pain of change. And so I said, I'm ready to change and do something different. And that's, I mean, this is what makes, this is what makes any musician that, that I respect, right? Any musician that I admire, that's what makes them different in my, in my opinion, right? It's to remain teachable, right? Mm. I mean, to constantly put myself out there and say, you know, as I, as I, I hear often, I hear guys say, you know, I, I thought I was all that in a bag of chips, you know? It's like, I'm not, I'm just, yeah. And I tell my, my students all the time, I'm just like you. I'm just a lot older and I've got a lot less days to practice left. <laughs> <laughs> so I better, I better get my ass off the sofa and like, and, and start paying attention, right? Yeah. But you know, you, you know, and I think about you so often, well, obviously, you know, we talk, you know, we talk rather frequently, right? But <laughs> it's, <nice>. you know, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> You're like, you're like my uncle, man. Yeah, like part of my family. It's great. Uh, that, that, that <laughs> uncle. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You know, but it's, you know, one of those things that if I were to imagine putting myself, you know, having had the success that you have, I mean, to have one of the largest jobs in the world at your age, it's one of the things that usually follows with that is that somebody now at this point, um, uh, they, they close ranks and they're, mm -hmm. and now they become very protective and they kind of isolate and they're, and they're like, okay, now I need to protect what's mine. And I need to, I need to, you know, uh, I can't, I can't let anybody see that I'm vulnerable. Well, eventually that's going to trickle into your music. And yeah. if you don't want to be vulnerable, then I don't really want to hear you. Mm. because the whole point of music is to be vulnerable. Yes. I mean, the only thing that's attractive to me is if somebody lets me in. If somebody's just going to play the fucking horn notes, I'm not, I have so little interest in that, right? Yeah. What's the point? How many times have you heard people play Tchaikovsky Fox? I mean, hundreds, yeah. Oh, Absolutely. God. I mean, I'm like 75 years older than you are. I mean, I've heard it <laughs> bazillion times. Is a bazillion a word? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a real number, too. <laughs> it's right after billion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the thing is, is that you can tell. I mean, you know, we've got two things. We've got two bits. I've got, you know, that toolbox. You know, the toolbox is the thing that that's why I practice every morning. The toolbox is that is, you know, I need those skills. I need those skills. I need to be able to play till the end. You know, I need to be able to play to the end of Alpine Symphony. So when I go, ba -da so that I can do it. And I can't practice that the week before. Yes. Two weeks before right? You're going to build that strength, that, that endurance, that fitness. That's, that's it. That's exactly yeah. it. But then, I, you know, I've got the toolbox, but then, you know, it's, I, I don't write poetry. Why not? Because I don't have anything to say. <laughs> right? I just don't have anything to say. I like to play the horn because I feel like I have something to say. That's my, that's my language. Wow. I, yeah. And you know, but I don't write music. Oh, yeah. God, that would be awful. Well, there, there was there was a moment. I mean, where I stopped playing the horn. I mean, you remember that really? I mean, I you remember that well. And I remember I was really frustrated. I'd call you up and I'd say, Eric, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not playing the horn. I'm not practicing. I'm not achieving these goals. And you tell me, you'd reassure me, you'd be like, you're in the right place. I remember that, and I was like someone that believed in me who was just like, listen, like I have all these years of experience and I see where you're at right now and you're taking care of first things first. Like, um, I, for those of you who don't know my story, like, uh, I really struggled with grief and, uh, you know, I went through a period where I didn't play uh, horn, you know, I was really pretty self-destructive. And, um, after, you know, I took some time off the horn, um, I decided at a certain point, like I really missed it. Like I, and I, it was my decision at that point to come back to it 
because it was like I didn't have that arm or that leg, you know, like, and it was like a, a part of me that was missing, but also I didn't have that ability to express myself, like to say what I wanted to say where words stopped. And I feel like that's when you pick up the horn, that's you expressing your soul. That's you expressing, you know, what, you know, what your heart says. And that's why it's so personal when I hear you play. And I mean, you, the question that you asked me earlier was, uh, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, how do we, I mean, there are times when we have to fake commitment. There are times when I have to play something really beautiful, when I'm really angry. And sometimes when I'm, uh, I have to play something that's really brutal when I'm not particularly feeling that way. But as I'm reminded often, it's not about me, mm. right? Yeah. So this goes to you. And then, you know, you, your comment is like, you know, the part about you having it taken away from you and then fighting to get it back, right? And we always don't, we don't always get that chance. I mean, you know, sometimes people die before we get a chance to say goodbye. Sometimes, I mean, you know, like your dad. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, it's like really you get a chance to say goodbye. I mean, that's just, you know, that's life, life on life's terms, you yeah. know, and, and then what happens is how we deal with it. Yeah. Right? So look, yours is like fucking Hollywood story. It's like, oh, <laughs> boy, boy stops playing, boy stops playing horn, boy starts playing horn, boy ends up principal horn of the Chicago Symphony. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't always work like that. Yeah, well, it's an after school special, right? <laughs> it's like a, a Hallmark special. <laughs> Wait, do we need to go to school? <laughs> We're going to have uh, Martin Short play me in my after school special. <laughs> Maybe Dana Carvey. Well, Wayne. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll be watching it. I'll be tuning in. <laughs> oh, that's great, man. So, you know, um, yeah. What, talk about being uh, a father and how that approach has helped you um, be a teacher, how it's helped you be a better person. Um, just, I mean, I know your kids are like one of the, mo the most important things in your life and you just love them and that's who well, you are. Uh, you know, may I, may I take issue with something before I start, before I answer the question? You Please. said how it's helped me to become, a, become a better person. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm hoping... <laughs> I'm hoping for me, you know, at some point. So look, I mean, I love, you know, I have four kids that I adore. And, you know, I mean, I had two of my, two of my sons were born during a really tough time in my life. I mean, and, you know, I was to say I was an absentee father would be an understatement, right? And I, you know, I loved them. I loved them. But I, you know, it's one thing to, you know, this is like horn. And this is exactly it. You know, it's like, okay, so I can say I love playing the horn, but, oh, I love music. But if I don't practice every day, then again, it goes to actions. Intentions versus actions, right? So like with my kids, and I would say to my boys all the time, oh, I was, you know, I was texting this morning with my son, Elliot, who's out in Oregon, who I love. He's like, you know, and he sent me this thing. It was very funny. You would like it. It was very, very funny. And, you know, and I mean, I can remember, it was like, this is one of those things that, um, you know, I can say I love you, but it's meaningless if I'm not present. You know, if when you get up in the morning, I'm not there, or when you, when you need me, I'm absent, then that's not, you know, then it's not loving you, right? I don't get to do it on my terms, you know? Mm -hmm. So what having kids has taught me, you know, as with, you know, other aspects of my life, is the showing up. Suit up, show up and shut up. <laughs> my, kids, my kids wish that I would shut up a little bit more, but that's not an option. <laughs> but you know, I mean, you I, my oldest, Jack, is, um, you know, he, he applied to med school. He's like, he was a rower. He was, yeah, he's a brute. I didn't know he did med brute. school. That's... Yeah, well, he's, he's not, he's applied. He's, you know, had a couple of interviews. He's waiting to find out if he gets in. Um, you know, Elliot's a rock climber. I, I watch him rock climb. We went out, to, uh, we went to Utah. A while ago, and, and he pulled a boulder <laughs> on your head. He wanted, he wanted, he's like, yeah, just go up that you know kind of roundish boulder, and there was this like big fat old guy, me, right, just like spread eagled over this boulder, and he was, I, I thought he was just going to like die laughing, <laughs> and then I watched him, and I was like, oh, it's a discipline, you know. I have so much to learn. My my uh, my um third son Julian, 
is um, a sophomore at NEC, plays viola, and he's he loves music, loves music. And then my daughter, I mean, my daughter. <laughs> 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 As she I, up. Yeah. I remember when she was born, man. I remember like, yeah, it's... That's right! That's right. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, um, you know, it's... Uh, there, there's just nothing like it. You know, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing like just being able to be present, you know? And, um, you know, as is always the case, you know, whether it's students, sponsee, um, students or, or, you know, um, or kids, you know, it's like, having a front row seat to watch somebody else grow. Wow. You know, and that's what, a, you know, and all I have to do is like be present. You know, I don't have to drive the bus. I just have to show up, which for me is a Herculean task. <laughs> <laughs> me too, man. Uh, Steve Lewis talks about when he came to visit you, uh, you were practicing with Sienna. And it was this moment where you're, you know, you're, she was with her violin, Sienna's a violinist, and you were over her and you were just kind of like, you know, right next to her practicing where they're completely focused on the music, the two of you doing the same task. And he said it was such a beautiful moment to be a part of, but to watch the two of you growing together while you're practicing. Steve uh, is just a hopeless romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that about him. He is the best. <laughs> there is nobody in the world who is just, I mean, he really is. He just is a hopeless romantic. I mean, he can, he can literally see beauty at any moment. And of course, you know, this is, you know, it's so funny because we all know because there's the stage persona. There's, you know, there's the duck that looks so calm on the water. And then there's the underneath where it's, it's like the, the feet are like this. So, yeah. right. So as I'm playing this thing with Sienna, you know, what's going through her mind? I mean, Steve sees, oh, you know, that we're, that we're just enjoying this moment of spiritual ecstasy and that we're like connected to souls. And what's she thinking? Ah! How much do I have to play with this guy? Will he just stop playing? <laughs> you know, and you know, it's, and uh, you know, but, but having said that, I've gone on stage a couple of times with her. We do this, we do this festival in January and, and there's something, there's something that's really, there's something amazing about like going on and playing something with her. Yeah. You, you know, it's just, it is freakish. I mean, both Jack and Elliot, both, they, both of them played um, violin too, but bagged out rather early on, right? Um, and then, you know, Julian plays and, but it, you know, there's something, but because, you know, Sienna's, you know, I, I'm more hands-on with her. I mean, she doesn't, she doesn't have the, the um, privilege of being able to like, you know, step back. But uh, it's um, having kids, you know, I think about it often. This is probably not a conversation for live Instagram, but you, know, <laughs> you, you will make a fabulous dad. I mean, you will. It's just, Where do you find, how do you find kids? Where, where do they come from again? Oh, I got mine. All four of them. Give me the other three free. <laughs> they just, you know, Child for sale. Anyone? <laughs> Child for sale. <laughs> I'll take that one, please. <laughs> that, one, take that one and that one. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but, you know, uh, you know, as with anything, I mean, the, the joy comes, you know, it's a responsibility. You know, and the responsibility is like, you know, you can't like playing horn. I mean, if you're, a, if you're an amateur and there are some amateurs that are so much more committed than I, yeah. right? I mean, well, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch, but who are incredibly committed, right? Yeah. Who have nine to five jobs, nine to seven jobs, and then they practice horn every day, mm. right? But I mean, horn, unlike playing piano or the guitar or singing, it's kind of a, a thankless taskmaster, right? And if I, don't, if I don't practice every day, people know. I mean, you know, as they say, one day, I know two days, the, the orchestra knows three days, the public knows. Yeah. For me, it's like the end of the day, everybody knows, right? This friend of mine used to call the horn a jealous mistress. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's true, you know, and yeah. you know, I've, and I've had some, I've had, some. <laughs> I mean, 
I mean, the, 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 the yeah, metaphor. The horns. The horns. You've had a few horns, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's true. It's funny, you know, start talking about Steve, you know, um, and I've only had two horns. Ever since I left the orchestra, I've only had two horns. And both of them are his. And I told Steve, I said, you know, when I said it's like a marriage, I mean, I have, I have one horn here and I have my other horn, my, you know, Steve's other horn is sitting at home. Right. And that's, you know, for me, uh, everyone's, you know, again, this is just my, you know, I don't have, you know, what I say is meaningless. It's just my experience. But it's not about it's not about the equipment. It's not about, you know, are you playing at an altitude? It's not about whether you were, you know, left on a doorstep as a child. It's not about what happened yesterday. Right. It's not. I mean, because the fact is, is I still have the same things on which to work today. Mm. I still, I can't play in time and I can't play in film, right? So today I wake up, first things first, like you said, right? And I'm like, I tend to fundamental and I work on those basics. And I'm like, okay, you know, I, it's, my life gets easier. You know, all of a sudden my music becomes perhaps a little bit more interesting if I'm not uh, so out of tune with the person next to me that, you know, people are just, you know, covering their ears, right? So it's, you know, like when, what kids don't understand is that they see you and they see you doing these Instagrams. Oh, I forgot. Oh yeah. What, is it too late? Am I supposed to? No. Am I supposed to? Is this our fireside chat? <laughs> <laughs> Hold it back and forth. We'll all sing Kumbaya. <laughs> We'll sing a ballad. <laughs> we are, we are the future. <laughs> wow, you're dating yourself there, honey. <laughs> hey, now it's it's all cell phones, right? <laughs> That's it. That's it. We don't do lighters anymore, baby. Yeah. Yeah. So no. yeah, but I mean, you were saying, yeah, they see me with the fireside chats and just think it's like you know something cool. And, and they're like, like, oh, he's got he's got this time to burn. I should be on YouTube. I should be. I should be spending my time. And what they don't understand is that you don't, I mean, the amount of time, the amo it's, and it's not just the amount of time, it's the kind of time, right? What are you doing when you pick up the horn, right? Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, it is, I mean, there is a certain investment in, in the performance that, you know, because to you, I mean, and to any of us, to any, any pro, any pro is like, okay, you know what, there's this thing and for, and for, for a, a small moment in time, nobody's playing on stage, right? But the fact is it'll end. And then the day afterward, everyone's gonna be back on stage. And if during the course of this period of time, whatever it is, I haven't been playing and I'm like, oh, woe is me. And oh, I should be, you know, then I'm gonna walk on stage and I'm gonna pay the price. <sighs> yeah, you're right. And I don't want that. I, I've played some ugly moments on stage. I would, I would prefer not to repeat them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's how we keep from doing that, right? We do the work so that I don't get nervous. I don't doubt myself on stage because I've done the work. Exactly. And when exactly. people ask me about nerves, I'm like, listen, I don't get nervous because I trust what I'm doing because I've done all the work the right way. I don't have any doubts in myself. That's right. You know? And it's all yeah. preparation. And that's, you know, this is a thing that's like, you know, everyone wants an easier, softer way. Yeah. Uh, you know, how, how do I play? How do I play high notes? How do I play lip trills? How do I play this? How do I play that? You know, Rolf. Ah! I love Rolf. Rolf. He's Rolf's dead. And, you know, you know, he's, you know, what a shame. You know, he was the, the best man at my first wedding. He was so funny. But he used to say, he, when I was, you know, I, uh, you know, we, we'd, we'd be teaching together and kids would play and he would give grades. He would like just write D. Practice, practice, practice. That was his comment. And you know, everyone was like, oh, what a, what a, just what an asshole. And it was, and the fact is, is that there's so much truth in it. It was A, below average, and they needed to practice. That's it. That's wow. it. It's so not complicated. Right? <laughs> it's so not complicated. I mean, it's like, oh, wait, what could I do in, in, instead of those things. 
<laughs> As opposed to practicing, could I just um, think about it? Right. And Do you have, any, you have any stories with Rolf that you'd love to, you'd like to share? <laughs> <laughs> oh. or, or with Sam? Okay, uh, yeah, some, some. Okay, I remember, okay, so I remember we were in, ah, uh, I love Jeff. Jeff is just, uh, and you played with Jeff. You were in Dallas yeah. and you played with Jeff. No, 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 I didn't play with him in Dallas. I played with him in Philly. I just guessed it a couple of weeks. I did Saratoga Springs and then- Oh, he left, he left Dallas. He was in the Dallas Symphony before yeah. you got there. And that's he, right, that's right. He was there my was coach in Brass Quintet at Curtis. And I was like, this guy, this guy, this uh, guy. Really uh, one of the funniest human beings and one of the, I mean, and we used to, we were, we were roommates. We, and when we were on the, on the road, all three of the other guys had singles and Jeff and I were roommates. I was his wife on the road. Oh my God. We had the most fun I've ever had in my life. It was just, ah, uh, I, you know, ah, uh, I just miss him anyway. But, um, um, so Rolf, we were, we were on the road. We were on tour sometime and we went to, um, we were in California. I think we were in, uh, San Bernardino, uh, I don't know. I can't remember. We were in, in, in some city, right? So Rolf and I had gone out. So we came back really late, right? So we came back and we were staying in some, you know, hotel and we, you know, we came back and we're standing there at the door. It's like 2.30 in the morning. And, and, you know, so we go into our rooms and Rolf, you know, goes into his room. You know, I was still fiddling around with my key. Rolf goes into his room and he comes out. And I'm like, um, what are you doing, Rolf? And he says, oh, it's not my room. And I'm like, what do you think it's not your room? He said, yeah, no, I did, but you just went in. And he's like, yeah, but it's not my room. And I'm like, hmm. And of course it's taking us a while to like figure all this out, right? So I said, well, what do you mean? And somebody had, had um, gotten into his room and stolen his stuff. <sighs> but I mean, stolen his stuff, his trumpets, his music, his clothes, his toothbrush, his dirty laundry. I mean, they literally fucking cleaned the room out. It was nothing in. He thought it was like he'd gone into the room and it was just like an empty room. Oh. So he was, he was, you know, and of course, you know, now at this point, now we're trying to put, you know, piece this all together and we're like, oh. So, so the thing is, so, you know, the tours, you know, we got a concert the next day. So what does he do? Get some trumpet. And has no music, right? Borrows some trumpet, plays the gig, plays it, in, you know, in whatever clothes he can manage, right? And and Sam did this too. Sam was like, I remember being in Japan, and Sam was like, you know, like his music didn't show up because the tuba was big, and nobody wants to carry a tuba because it's the unloved stepchild, right? You know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and each one, Scotty Hartman, Scotty would go away for these like, for these um like camping trips. He would just go off on his own and he would disappear and be like, yeah. And we, and he would show up like a minute before the gig. And we'd be like, Scott, what? or like he'd miss the plane. He'd be like, yeah, mm. I was like, oh. <laughs> on the lake. And, and he, like, he'd get caught like, you know, he was sailing and, and got blown to the other side of the lake or he was rafting and he got you know taken down. And yet he would always show up. And what I learned from these guys was there was no, there were no excuses. It was like having four brothers and each brother was like more fucking difficult than the last. And everyone, and it was, you know, and the great thing was, it was like, there was never, oh, there was none of this like PC shit where it's like, oh, how do you feel? Is there anything I could do to make you feel better? Oh, you didn't play so well. Yes, right. <laughs> oh, did you have a rough day on stage? Did you not, oh, are you having trouble at home? In the same way, it's like we go, you know, I go, I talk to guys all the time. It's like, you know, everyone has bad days. Get over it, right? Yeah. Do the right thing, right? And, you know, I'm sure, like, how old are you now? 20? Uh, 30, yeah, 36. 36, right. And, you know, have you had some, have you had some days that you would care not to repeat? Oh, my God. I remember we had one on Newport. Uh, we were doing the Beethoven sex set, and you said, wow, you just played like a bag of shit. I was like... <laughs> Yes, I, I'd just gotten off a plane. I'd come into the festival. I was so happy to see you. And I hadn't looked at my part and I assumed I knew it. And I miscounted some bars rest. And you're like, you just play like a bag of shit. <laughs> and you love me all the same, but you're just like, you're honest. It was like, man. And, and you know, and, and the thing is, is that what we realize is that that's, you know, I mean, and, you know, and having said that, you know, I mean, I've, 
I mean, when it comes to horn players, I mean, there are very few horn players that I would, that I enjoy, to whom I enjoy listening. And you're one of them, right? Because, I mean, there are some great horn players. There are some really, there are some really great horn players who could do all kinds of things that I could never do. And I could never play. And that's fine. But, you know, again, it's, it's, um, uh, you know, it's a little bit like nice house, nobody home. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but I've heard it said before. <laughs> you know, and uh, so, uh, you know, I, as I watch you, as I watch you kind of stepping, you're not stepping, you know, into, you know, Mr. Clevenger's footsteps. I mean, you're just sitting in the chair that he occupied for decades, right? And you bring yourself and your section, Jim Smeltzer, one of my yeah, favorite. I love him. I love ah, him. Fucking he's love like my him. big brother. Yeah, he's oh. in Northwestern with him. Uh, yeah. Well, I have I have some stories about Jimmy, but I won't but I won't share them now. But um, and you know he's I mean, it's such a great section. It's such a great section, and you know, and it has a history of being in it. And 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 to see you sitting there and making the contribution, it's you know, it's amazing. And, and it should give as, you know, as with these kids who get a chance to listen to you speak. I mean, you know, the kids who don't, who, who not, I mean, you know, unlike, unlike me, I get a chance to speak to you with great frequency. So, I mean, I already love you, right? But there are kids to whom you are just David Cooper, the principal horn of the Chicago Symphony. But by putting yourself out there in this fashion, in this very public fashion, you let people in and that's, I mean, and that's, that's your job. I mean, your job is not to, I mean, you know, again, that, that phrase, what somebody else thinks of me is none of my business. Yeah. I don't give a shit what somebody thinks of me. It's like when I put my head down on the pillow at, at the end of the day, do I like me? Right. And, you know, and at that point, you know, so having said that you're not doing it to, to be popular. You're not doing it to be loved. You're not doing it to be, um, you know, uh, you know you, you're not doing it for any other reason than to just be of service. Which, I mean, as I, I was talking to some guys last night and I was like, <laughs> um, being of service is not my go-to setting. <laughs> I feed my kids, I teach my students, I show up, you know, I work with other men under duress, right? Because I'm a really selfish guy. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Yeah. Right? But what I realize is that by, you know, by showing up for other people. I... And we can, we can show up in so many ways right now. And that's what this Corona time has showed me. It's just like, okay, I can't show up in person. I can show up with a phone call. I can show up by making a video or giving an interview giving freely of my time and asking nothing in return. And it's, you know, I see that generosity from you and from so many other people. But, um, yeah, but I, I, I am, I am getting paid, aren't I? <laughs> oh yeah. Hold on. The checks in the mail. <laughs> I love you, man. Dude, I, we're about to end this, this conversation. I just want to say hi to Hans Klepsch, to Luca Benucci, to Dale Clevenger, to all the people who are watching. I love you. I mean, dude, <laughs> Mr. I mean, Cooper. Oh, I fucking adore you. I love you a ton. Hey, Yay! thank you, man. Hey, Yay! happy Saturday. And happy uh, Saturday. I, hope, I hope we have a, another chat like this again soon. Okay? Love you a ton. Love you, buddy. See bye, you brother. soon. See ya. Bye-bye.